All right, part B is very similar to part A. The only difference here is that you are multiplying, which just means you have more things to factor. That's all it means, is that you are you have more things to factor, but you're still factoring and eliminating and reducing. That's it. That's all the difference is, okay? Um, so we're, again, just more factoring. And that's it, okay? So let's dive on in. So let's look up here at number one. See, what is it? More things to factor, right? Um, I warned you that that's all it was. However, it's good to practice your factoring skills. So um, how would I factor this one? Difference of two squares. Why is it difference of two squares? You have perfect squares that are being subtracted, right? Okay, how would I factor this one? Uh, complex. complex. Why? Because of this two, right? There's three terms and the leading is not one. Okay. How would I factor this one? Simple. Why is it simple? Because it's cast with a friendly one in front. Okay. And these are the same. So I just, I just, once I find one, I know the other, right? All right. So let's begin to factor. So difference of two squares means I'm taking the square root of the first term and the square root of the second term. What is the square root of 4x squared? 2x. What is the square root of 1? 1. When you take the square root of something, you're going to have a positive and a negative. So we are done with that one. We're going to factor the second one, which is our denominator. So the second expression we have is 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. So it's complex, so that leads us to our x. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Our b is negative 5. What multiplies to give me negative 6, but adds to give me negative 5? Negative 6 and 1. Agree? Again, you could do grouping or the box, but I've noticed more people use the box than grouping. In the box, your first term goes in the first box. So we have 2x squared. Your last term goes in the last box. Your x marks the spot of everything else. It doesn't matter where the one or the negative six go. All we're doing is GCF all the way around. What is the GCF of the first row? All right, x, 1x, good job. What is the GCF of the second row? Negative, Negative three. GCF of the third row? Two. <laughs> column, that's not a row. Two x. GCF of the last column? One. So these are my factors, right? So we have x minus three, and we have two x plus one. These are gonna be the same factors for the other denominator, agreed? So x minus 3 and 2x plus 1. Oh, wait. Because they're the same. Oh. All right, simple is my favorite. What multiplies to give me 9 but adds to give me negative 6? Negative 3. Oh, wait. Negative 3 and negative 3. Negative 3. X. Negative 3 plus negative 3 is? Negative six, a negative times a negative makes a positive. All right, what's left? We did it. Now we're on eliminating. All right, what can I eliminate? Perfect. Okay, what else? Perfect. You can cross. Because there was an x minus 3 here. You can cross the multiplication symbol. So what are we left with? Mm -hmm. That's what all of that simplified down to. Okay, what does x not equal? Uh, what, Good. what kind of negative. there we go negative one half That's crazy. all of that came net 
Okay, how do we feel? All right, we're gonna pick up the pace. Y'all are gonna tell me what to do. I'm not gonna say anything. Complex. So for the first one, we're gonna have to complex. Do I need to do anything to this one? No. Okay, for this one, expression three. Dots. Dots, perfect. This one? Yes, perfect squares. And then four, simple. All right, let's go. So we're gonna start with the expression number one in the numerator, complex X, what goes in my X? Perfect. There we go, good job. All right, what's next? Okay. Got it. Cool. Got it. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to GCF. So what is my GCF? Cool. Perfect. Good. Great. Oh my gosh, they were so similar. Good job. Exactly. You know, similar. All right. Expression two. Is it good to go? Yeah. Okay. On to expression three. What happens? Exactly. Say, and why am I doing that? Dots. Difference of two squares. That's a perfect square and that's a perfect square. Done. Perfect. Look at y'all. All right. Done. What's left? All right, who gets to go away? Okay, okay. Hold on. This one and that one. And anything else? There we go. So our final answer is... And what is your restriction? Uh, X equals one. Negative X. Five. Negative. Negative five. Conclusion of multiplication, huh? It is, right? A little bit. It's like really easy. It's just like, it's just it, it just doesn't know what to do. Like get it done. Yeah. Good. All right. A lot of times you guys forget algebra one after we do a little bit of algebra two. So <laughs> number three is an algebra one refresh. Okay. So looking at this, Going back into that Algebra 1 file cabinet. You can. So there's a couple ways of solving it. You can just multiply and then reduce. Or you can reduce then multiply. I want you to do whichever one you want. Refreshing your Algebra 1 skills. Wait, what do we do? Yeah, 5 times 12 is yx. So take a couple minutes, dust off that algebra one brain, and either you multiply, then reduce, or you reduce, then multiply. Does it matter which way you go? Absolutely, Absolutely not. Wait, are you? Yeah. <laughs> can we do four times seven? Can we still split it? You can still multiply the same. Since they're both numbers. I don't want y'all to forget algebra one, which tends to happen. Why are you looking at that? Let me check. 
Eric is one. Yeah. You can reduce your variable and your number. Yeah, you can reduce by two. Oh, what if whatever eliminates? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you reduce any more? Or are you done? Okay. Remember that. All right, let's see what we did. Um, by raising your hands, how many people multiplied then reduced? So I can know which way to go. Okay. So we multiplied then reduced. Cool, cool, cool. I'm a reduce then multiply kind of girl. Yeah, um, I like to work with smaller number as possible. Wait, but how would, how would you, how would you reduce Before? Oh, I will gladly show you. I would go ahead and get rid of the four and turn 12 into a three. I would go ahead and get rid of an X and I would go ahead and get rid of my Ys. Because there's two of them and I only have one. And I'm left with seven X over 15. You're done. I tried to combine things that didn't go together, and then I'm just confused. That's why I said you could do either way, right? Uh, how do I get rid of the two? Because this means I have two X's up here, and I only have one that I can eliminate. So it goes from being two to only being one X. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's just saying that it's squared. So this is four, and it means you have two X's here. X squared means I have two X's. And this is five Y, and this is seven Y over 12 X. So I'm taking away one of those X's because I, and I can take away four because it makes my 12 A three. But, we will do it your way. Here we go. Multiplying, multiplication, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Please do not cross multiply. You only cross multiply if there is an equal sign in between, not when there is a product. Okay. Because you divide, they reduce. Equals four divided by 12 is one third. I have a one in the numerator and a three in the denominator. Yeah. Um, but multiplying four times seven, 28 X squared over Y five times 12 is 60 X Y. Okay. 28 and 60, their greatest common factor would be four. I can divide both of these by four. I divide you by four. I divide you by four. My X is still eliminating. And so is my Y. So I'm left with seven X over 15. Either way. Would it be seven or fifteen X or seven? Your X is in the numerator. That's where the most of the X's existed. Okay. If you think about it in terms of subtracting powers, it'll be two minus one, and that X is still in the numerator. Okay. All right. So that's our little algebra two little recap.